Good morning everybody. How are we today? Another lovely day here in Coffs Harbour. So we're going to continue now with our, um, our nice little box. So we'll just carry on with that today and we're going to start the internal components. But during the week somebody asked me how do I get the glue of the box done without getting glue all over the place. So last week, if you remember rightly, we had a little struggle with the internal componentry or the, 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 the bottom panel of the, of the box. It was a little bit thicker than it should have been and uh, it didn't quite fit. So I put it aside so that I could just uh, sand the top of it uh, or sand, sand both sides of it really and, and make it fit. And part of that was because of the weather. We've been, it's been really, really wet here over the last few weeks and everything has expanded way beyond where it should be. And when I try to fit the boxes together, I try to make sure that the, the boxes fit neatly together so that they're perfect fits. And the slightest variation often causes it to be either too big or way too small. So I try to get as, as close as possible. I got it really, really close before the show last week and um, um, as you saw, the expansion of the, of the, uh, the timber uh, caused it so that it didn't, it didn't actually fit. So I sanded it off a little bit and since then it's kept on raining. <laughs> so we've, uh, we've ended up with um, having to sand a little bit more than I needed to off it. But it now fits. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to glue up last week's uh, box just to give people an idea of how I get it together. And then I'll put it aside and I'll go on with the internal componentries of the second one that I did last week where I cut the top off. So that's how we're going to go run, the, run the show today. And so we're going to sort of go backwards a little bit just to get things done. So these were the, the parts that we made last week. We had um, our four sides and, um, and the base. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put it together and show you the process that I go through when I'm, when I'm gluing things up. Lots of people put tape on their boxes and, um, to, to avoid getting uh, glue, um, but I don't put that much on because when I try to build my boxes, I try to make sure that the, the joints are really, really good so that they don't actually need a great deal of glue to hold them together. Glue eventually breaks down, but that over a period of time, it's not going to worry a box, really. So, this is how I go about it. The first thing I do is try and protect my bench. So, I build myself, or I get myself a little panel, and I just crank that to the bench, like so. That way, things aren't going to move around. And this is just, a, um, just to, so that I don't get any glue and stuff all over my benches. It's uh, eventually get discarded. The next thing I'll do, if you remember rightly, when I built this box the other day, or last week, I put two crosses or two marks to show which joints go together. Okay, so that's, that, what's that, that's what that cross is there. So when I put this together, because they're dovetail joints, the box will go together exactly the same way that it was when I cut the trench for the base. And that's what we want it to do. So the first thing I do is I get my long edge. That's the one that's going to get glued up first. I don't, I don't get the glue bottle and turn it upside down and squirt glue all over my work. What I'll do is I'll get a piece of uh, off cut and I'll put a little bit of glue on the off cut. The glue that I'm using there is Type On 3. I find that that works really, really well. Um, it, it, it dries, <coughs> excuse me, it dries a little bit clear. Excuse me a sec, I'll just get a... That a little brush. Now when I glue the end together, I put the glue in. What I try not to do is I try not to fill the whole section with glue. 
because the glue the joints are, are, are really nice and neat and, and fit well um, you don't need great gobs of glue in there to, to glue it together if you're putting heaps and heaps of glue in there obviously your joints are way too too loose and glue will not be and is not always a good filler okay so when I put the glue in you can see I've, I've, I've put a small amount of glue on that one there but what I've done is I haven't actually gone to the inside of the box and I always grab a hold of the, the inside of the box when I'm doing the gluing and then I work from the outside in like so so just a little bit and I only go three quarters of the way in again we'll do the same and we just do that all the way through now work quickly you've got you've only got 10 minutes turn it around do the other end again just small amounts of glue you don't need heaps and heaps like so and then lay it on its back like so pick up the one with the cross on it and in exactly the same process now that one is going to go into there so I only do one end of the sleeves of the end pieces like so and then we can just push that together now it won't go all the way down but it will go most of the way because your, your joints stick through each other you're going to have to um, work really really quickly so we go to the other end so the other bit is going to go here so again just a little bit of glue on it and these shouldn't take very long to do so have a little practice sometimes on on some of your jobs and just make sure that um, you, you're, you're able to do things quickly and the secret is to make sure that everything fits together well before you actually start gluing that way you're not struggling with things now when I've got the two ends done the next thing is to do a little bit of glue in the in the ends now I, I see people filling the trench up with glue all the way around and I find that if you do that and you don't allow any movement your box will eventually expand and push things apart and you saw the results last week of what happens when things get really really damp and wet and warm and so on there's my my panel so all I'm going to do is slide that back into there. I know it fits this time because I, I tested it. Okay, so we've got that fitting. And then it's just a matter of gluing the same process. Just on the box. Now remember, I'm only going half, three quarters of the way through. I'm not going all the way through. around make things easy for yourself and you can see there isn't a lot of glue in there so the next thing to do sit that over there is again same process that we did with the first panel and when I'm gluing the uh, the bases in the only place that I put glue in in the base if it's a, a relatively snug fit is on the end grain of the panel 
So the end grain on this base panel here was at the two ends. And that's the only place that I put a glue in. If you, if you put glue in all of the sides as well, the timber can't expand. You're gluing the whole thing into a situation where it's just locked up tight. That's not going to be good for the box in, in future years. If you have a box that you want to become an heirloom, or you want it for a special purpose or something like that, you don't, you don't want something that will fall apart within months or even, even a couple of years after you've made it. And so, we just pop that on there. Now I know everything fits well because I've pulled it apart and fitted it back together a number of different times. Just wipe off my excess. I'm not too concerned about the glue on the outside because the outside is going to get sanded. What I don't want to do is get too much glue on the inside. Now once you've got it to that stage, get yourself a reasonable clamp. Now we're using these Bessie clamps, so they're really good for this. All I can do now is squeeze that up. Now, when I do these, because the joints are really well fitted and fit really nicely, there is no need to leave the clamp on it. Do the bottom and now we're going to do the top. And just pull it in. And you can see where I've pulled it in. You can see little squeeze outs where I've, I've, it's, it's come out. So I just wipe off my excess. And some people say, well, get something and squeeze up the end from end to end. Well, you shouldn't have to because the glue, the, the, the joint, because of the way the joint works, it will screw, come into its right sp spot anyway. Now, if you have any excess, you can see I'll just turn to this camera here. You can see in the box, look how much squeeze out I've got. Very, very little. And so what I'll do there is I'll just use a ruler and just scrape out anything that's in there. And if it's really bad, you can see my joints actually fit together really nicely. If it's really bad, well then I'll get a, a wet cloth and I will give it a wipe out with a wet cloth. But uh, this is just just a tiny little bit of overrun. Now, if you want to, and you think it's not pulled together properly, the idea is to get yourself a really long clamp and squeeze it up this way. And you shouldn't have to do that because your joints should be really well fitted. Okay. Now, the next thing to do is to check for square. So, all I'm doing is just putting my square in there, check it in there, just need a little bit of a tweak. It's looking pretty good. Oh, I love it when it comes to all the, everything comes together nicely. I don't think I could get that any better. It's a really nice fit. Okay, so perfectly square. Now, what I'm going to do with that, I'm just going to put that aside and allow that to, to dry. So, that's my technique on how to glue up your boxes. If you're putting a lid in it, of course you're going to put the lid in there. You can't access inside to clear out any glue. So the idea is to not get too much in there to start with. You could do um, the technique that I've seen, uh, put a piece of tape on it. I tend to think that we, I don't put that much glue on that's going to uh, cause me any grief later down the track. So there's my little box. Okay, now this one here, we will, we will be doing some work on this later down the track. But uh, for now, let's just sit this aside and let it dry. And we'll carry on with the rest of the gear. So, brush in the water, get rid of my square. As you can see, that didn't take very much time at all, just a very short period of time to get things glued together. And you need to work quickly as well. Um, 
basically because the glue will set up and if you get a whole lot of glue inside your boxes you'll find um, very hard to get rid of it, hard, really hard to sand out. So work quickly and then you'll get things done nicely. Okay, put that aside. Now, my next task, the box that we cut the top off last week, this one here, just gotta find the top, there it is. Okay, so this is the one we cut the top off last week by using the, uh, on the router here. Um, and that's what it looks like. And the reason I went through last week's process was to get the, the joints nice. You can see that I've got a really nice clean fit once I've cut the top off and all of my joints are all exactly the same size. And that's what we were trying to achieve by expanding one of the joints. So now it's time for the inside. So my first task with this is to do an internal. Okay, so one of the things that we do is make the inside, one of the things that I do with my boxes is to make the inside, the inside liners. So I do the liners first before I actually go to um, building any of the parts. What I'm going to do with this one is red self adhesive base and I have a piece of um, three millimeter plywood here. Now, cheap as chips, but the reason I use a piece of plywood here is because some people don't particularly like the idea of having a liner. They like to see what's in the box, the timber in the box. So the thing about this is that if you make the liner so you can remove it, you can discard it if you don't like it, you can change the colour of it if you don't like it, and you can also clean it by pulling it apart and giving it a clean. None of the components that go inside this box are actually going to be glued together. Okay, so apart from the tray of course, but they will all be removable. So it makes the box a really good value, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Now, fitting the liner. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the plywood to fit the middle of there. We'll go over to the saw in a sec, but just need to get some measurements. I have a ruler here somewhere, there it is, and the pencil. go so make sure this fits fairly neatly so just measure across inside to inside and I have 178 I'm just going to write that on the side of the box and the length of the piece is going to be 270 the light's not good here but anyway 271 Okay, so I need a piece of plywood, 271 by 178. So what I have with my plywood is, I have, you can see on the outside edges of here, I've got a really rough surface along there, it's a really rough surface there, but I've got nice clean 90 degree angles there. So if I measure here, 178. just rip over and, and my length is going to be two seventy one. Okay. Now just going to turn ET around for you. See what we have. Maybe a bit closer. Now we'll cut that. 
The beauty about this saw is that it's got a, a really nice laser and if you work well with your laser um, you'll find that you can cut everything and you only have to cut it once. Mind you, you measure twice and cut once. Okay, so that fits really snug in there. Might need to trim off a little bit. Might just give it a tiny little bit of a trim just to make it fit a little easier. Okay, back to the workbench. Now, don't drop that in the box. If you drop that in the box, you will find that you can't get it out again if it's a reasonably tight fit. So my next bit is just to sand off the edges. Just a light sand, just to take the furry bit from the saw cut. Like so and I'm ready to fit my bays. Now, it doesn't matter which side you, you, you put it on. I try to think that the best side of the, of the, the piece of um, plywood is uh, the bit that's on the bottom. That way when people pull it out, they see a nice piece rather than a, a, a bit rough. So I've cut a piece of base. This is self-adhesive base. Now, um, you can get this from us if you just um, have a look online. Uh, Pamela's just put up some some no nah, she's shaking her head so I won't go there not yet but anyhow we, you can buy this from us we sell it in a, in a one meter or a half meter roll and there are a number of different colors of it so um, give us a call if you're looking for some and uh, we can sort it out for you so it's just a matter of, and you can see this is a little bit grubby. It's not too, it, it's only little bits of sawdust and it doesn't really affect what you're going to do. So I just peel the top off, peel the back off it and lay it on my piece of timber, making sure I've got overhang. And, and then I scrape it on the edge of my bench like that. And that, that does, that just seals it all down on top of the piece of plywood. Now I need to remove the excess. Now I could just get a standing off and just cut straight through that but that's going to cause a little bit of grief to my bench. So I have a panel that I, a piece of off cut from one of the tables that I made once. There's my cutting board. And then it's just a matter of Stanley knife and just run along the edge, turn it round again. You don't need to press all that hard when you're cutting that off, it, it'll come off fairly easily. The other thing that um, you might notice, so I'm cutting a fair bit off, it's, it's not because uh, 
of any reason other than the fact that there was, this was a leftover piece that I had and any bits and pieces that I cut off here are not worth anything. So I didn't bother trimming it down to any sort of particular size. Just need to get that side. Another little trim on it. As you can see, it's, uh, it's quite easy to do this by heart. Just give this another trim here. So there we have the board. So now what I want to do, and one of the things that I find with some of my students is that that uh, as soon as they see that, they get excited and put it in the box. Again, if you put it in the box, you can't get it out. So put your, cut yourself a little piece of ribbon and you can get this stuff You can get um, this from Spotlight. Spotlight. It's just a piece of ribbon. I'll cut that off. And then a little bit of super glue. So I'm going to put that on there. When I put this on, I'll put the shiny side down. That means it's going to show up through the box. Good old super glue. So just a little bit of that. Don't need a lot. Now, the other thing that I see a lot of people do, as soon as they do that, they put their fingers straight on it. The glue soaks straight through and sticks to their fingers. So it's a good idea not to stick your finger on it. Okay, now on the end of here, I have this little piece of tape that I put earlier. And this is just a piece of tape and this will stop it from give it time to dry it'll set up I don't bother taking that off afterwards I leave it there again as you know the reasons I for the reasons that I use to um, put this stuff in it doesn't really matter if it's got a bit of glue on a bit of uh, tape on the bottom and so there we have the internal panel now, again, don't stick that in there because that little bit of glue will stick to the side of your box and you can't get it off. So, let it sit for a couple of secs. A little piece of paper. And just give it a wipe. Now, the reason I put that little bit of uh, glue on the end of there was so that the end of it doesn't fray. And now we can put it in the box. And look at that nice fit. It looks nice in the bottom of the box. So that's my first part. Next part, what I want to do here is to actually make the locators for the lid top. So shift all this stuff. Drink while I'm waiting. While it's while I'm over there. Get rid of that. Okay. Now the locators of the lid. If, if you look at that, um, under these lights that we're working here in at the moment, is that's nice and bright. If you took the lights away, it becomes a little bit dull. So what we want to do is I want to um, lighten the inside of the box. So my liner and my componentry that goes in the box is going to be a complementary coloured timber. This is what I would call a fairly bright complementary timber. This is silver ash. And when you see it in the box, you can see you can see it's it's really really bright, and and that will lighten everything in the box, okay? Give you better visuals and so forth. So what we're going to do is we make the liners for the inside. 
Now, I've already made three of the liners, so I'm only going to make one liner, and um, I'll just show you how to make one, and then you can carry on uh, with your boxes in making the rest of them. So the first thing I do is measure my inside. Now you would have already measured that before when you did the, the, the liner um, plate, but always check it again. So it's 178. So what I've done is I've made the two sides, I've made one end, and I'm just going to make one of the other ends. So 178, and I look for any faults in the timber. When you look at this piece of timber, there's this little little fault here. Can't see that. Is that that little fault there? Um, now, it doesn't go all the way through. So on the other side, we could always use that as the outside panel of the of the of the, um, of the liner. This bit to be on the inside. So. So if I just measure here, 178. And when you cut these, they must fit really snug in there because what we're going to do is we're going to cut li um, mitre joints on the corners so that everything stays put. As I said to you before, we're not going to um, glue any of the bits in. All we're going to do is cut them to fit neatly, cut them to fit tight, and mitre the corners. So the first thing I'll do, I'm just going to go over and cut this. I'll be, I'll be back in a sec. Here's on again, folks. Just had to take a little trim off it. Cole, no. Michael wants to know how thick, how thick is the silver ash? Oh, this this uh, silver ash around the inside of this box um, is um, seven mil. This one. Now, the reason I use seven mil is because I want my tray sides, which are going to also be seven mil, to be the same size as the. Um, supports uh, so it gives a really nice neat even look about the box when you pull things apart so seven mil and the other thing that we're going to do with this liner is we're going to round over the top now the router bit that I'm using is our bullnose bit TBN4 and that TBN4 cuts seven millimeters and that will give me a perfect arc over the top of the piece of timber Okay, so that'll cut through there. So that's what's going to happen with it. Now, as I said before, you want a neat fit. And you can see that that fits really neatly into the, into the box. It's really, really nice and neat. My next task then is to cut the mitres on the, the piece. You'll see that the piece is much bigger than I need. And the beauty about that is... Um, the, the extra bit, this piece here, I'm going to use that as a support for the trace. So, cutting my mitres. So, I'm going to do that on my shooting board. Now when I'm doing the shooting board, I do this before I round over the top because there's going to be a little bit of tear out, but just to eliminate my tear out, I've got a sacrificial piece, that's that little piece there. I've got that sacrificial piece on my shooting board and then it's just a matter of planing the top. 
Now, this doesn't work if it's not square. So you need to make sure that your pieces are square. The other thing that I did before I started was I sanded the inside and the outside of these pieces to 800 grit. That way I'm working with very smooth timber and then I have, don't have a lot of work to do later. Now when you're doing this with your mitre board, just make sure your plane is sharp. You should be getting, if you have a look at those shavings, you should be getting these lovely little flat shavings and when you look at them, it's the whole piece right across the end and that is a sign of a really nice sharp plane. The shavings are, are just, the shavings are really nice. I've got a box full of them over there. I think I'll, I'll use them in photographing things when we want to do something. So just make sure that your plane is perfectly sharp, set up correctly. This timber is, uh, is quite, quite, quite hard. It actually looks really satisfying to use that tool. And the sound is good too. It's, it when sounds lovely sound, too. Yeah. yeah. The sound of, of, of a shaving of shaving pieces of timber off. It's a little knot halfway through that piece of timber. <laughs> and it's just shaving it off nicely. But you can hear it catch. Yeah. You can see that little knot there. It's just catching on that little knot, but that's not to worry. The knot's going, not going to be seen. Well, the knot's not going to be seen. That sounds good for good English, doesn't it? <laughs> the knot won't be seen because it's going to be inside the joint. And once you've got a coat of finish on, it's not going to move anywhere. Just make sure you're doing the right side when you do the second end. Mm. You don't want to have the right side up. There's no knot there. How nice is that? How nice does that sound? Mm. And look at the shavings. Just love it. This is an exceptionally good little plane. Um, little Veritas a block plane, low angle plane, and uh, really good for end grain. What I've done with it is I've un uh, uh, um, added a heel mould um, to it. You can buy those to fit. Um, you don't always have to have that, but I like the heel mould because you can wrap my fingers around it to hold it. I'm working quick because I want to be able to cut the top off it and I've only got 20 minutes left so we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. Oh, this is looking really good. Just, gonna, just a tiny bit more here. I find uh, you can you can cut these on the drop saw if you set yourself up on your on your bench and I have that system here. It's just that I find this gives me better accuracy because I'm working it by hand. I'm not relying on a on a machine. And so that that will fit in there like so. Got my mitres. Nice fit. So it sits nice and neat, right? So what I'm going to do now is show you the other bits that I made. Now these are the bits I made the other day. Now you can see they are all mitered. And so they go in like this. I'm go to the big camera. Let's shift some stuff here. I may need to use that again, so I won't take it away just yet. That organization. Now, the first one that I put in is the one where we've got the tag, and then I'll pop in my others. Okay, all I need to do now is make sure that this one fits. 
Okay, so I need to take a tiny bit more off it just so that it fits well. Not quite in there. And I can see why. I just haven't gone down far enough. And it's not going into the corner. I'll just take a tiny bit off. I wouldn't know it as the end with a knot in it. This is the patient's bit. Mm. Actually, I think I have to take a little bit off the two long ones. They look like they're not quite fitting either. So, I have to take a bit off there. Take a bit more off here. That knot is annoying. <laughs> of sandpaper fix up that edge yeah I'm gonna to have to take a little bit off one of these long ones this one here's got a, a square edge on it you don't want a square edge it's got to come to a point Mm. So that it fits into the corner. Looks like it might fit better. Okay, so we're looking better. Now I could push that in there, but I don't want to push that in there because it'll just get stuck and then I won't get it out. Not this way. It's not playing folks, but anyway, that's that's the process. I don't normally have these problems, but anyway. This one's just not going to play the game. This is what I'm trying to get everything. I might take a bit off this one here. It's got a square edge as well. That's what doing things in a hurry does for you. I did it in a hurry yesterday, trying to, to make sure I had a million things I had to do all before today. And I hurried and now I have this drama. Oh, the piece not fitting. That's good. It's almost there. Just talk amongst yourself, folks. I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> no, it's not going to go. Let's get a little bit more. I'll take it off the other end, actually. Well, what you are doing, Cole, is you're actually showing people that perseverance is what's needed in box making. Certainly it is. Certainly right there, Cammy. Look at that, when it does happen, it does happen, it happens really easily, go. look at that. Beautiful. And when you look at the joint, go to the little camera here, you can see the joint is absolutely spot on perfect. Mind you, it's not rounded over on the top yet, but my joints are actually perfect fit. So. Now you've got to get it out. What I'm going to do now uh, is round over the top edge. So, let's get rid of all of this stuff. Look at all these lovely shavings. How nice are they? And, and that's just from having well prepared tools. Um, so let's do that. Right 
need the plane either. We don't need the box on here. So what I'm going to do it's got to come around here. It's the advantage of having a small workshop. Everything's at hand. Well, relatively close. Particularly if you're, you're doing um, just small work. That's going to be the top edge. So I'm just going to do the top of that. So now line this up. to get this pretty much spot on. So we're lined up there on the fence. Now I've made the fence to fit the route a bit. So mark this in place. going to do is I'm just going to run across that top edge check this it doesn't seem right it's going to come down a tiny bit Uh, you notice the uh, my timber fence is swollen a little bit, so it's catching the top of the route a bit. So to make the fence, this is what you do: sit your route a bit in the correct height. Get me a mus. Turn the power on. And to give yourself a cut in the fence, this is what we do. Do it slowly. So, ears on everybody. And when you do that, this is what you get. This is the easiest way to make the fences. So there we have the shape of the route a bit, <coughs> and as you can see, it's gone all the way through. I just needed to trim that up a tiny little bit. So I'll put this back on. Piece of timber on here. I'm just going to line this up. The edge. And that's the inside edge of the curve. Lock my fence on. Okay, ears on folks. So, what I've done there is I've curved over. You can see I've got a curve there, but I've still got a flat top on there. So I actually haven't taken enough off. So if I just move that the tiniest little bit, 
and do it again. Use on. I now have a pretty close arc over the top of my piece of timber. Actually, I might do it just one more time. Use on. And that's pretty nice now. So, where's my box? I'll fit that back into there. It did go in there. Now everything fits nice. Okay, so what I need to do now is to dock it down to the right size, which we'll do. And when I um, when I dock these to size, I leave about five millimeters protruding over the top of the box. That'll do two things. Number one, it'll locate the lid, and the second thing that it'll do will allow. Um, a little bit more depth in the box for when you make the trays. So, like so. And we just measure into the bottom of the box. So I have 60 millimeters from the bottom of the box or the top of the, uh, the liner to the inside of the box. So if I just make them 65 millimeters high, what I can do is, and the way I measure them, is like this. I sit that up against the top edge, I should say. I put the top edge up against the box. A, a, a flat surface, I should say. Pencil. I measure 65 mil. And that's where I'm going to cut them. As you can see, I've got a fair bit of material left over, which is going to be really good for supports and other bits and pieces in the box. So we'll go over to the saw and I'll show you how I set up to cut that. Let's bring ET over here. Set up my Flat edge against there. You can see I've got it right on the, the laser mark. And now I need a couple of clamps. like to make sure that I've got everything clamped in place so nothing moves. Like so and now I'll cut two of those together. So I'll just put them up there like that. So ears on everybody. two on. Let's go back to the box.
Now, I think I'm going to have to trim up another one of these, basically, because it hasn't quite gone in there. And I think it was this one here. I think that might be the humidity playing with that again, too. Yeah, it is. It is, definitely. not want to go in. Oh, you saw it. Oh, piece of cake. Just had to do it the right way. As you can see now, I have my, my liners in the box and you can see, when you look at the box this time, you can see that, look how bright that is now. Nice and clean, crisp. Just needs a little tidying up here and there. And, um, We've got just this beautiful box and the liner is going to, to make everything stand out in the box. So that's where we're going to finish it today, folks. Next week, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use these offcuts that uh, I have and I'm going to cut them to size and fit them down for tray supports. So there'll be a little technique we're going to do there and, um, and then we're going to start looking at making the trays. But you'll notice now, and when I put the lid on the box, look at that, fits and it's flush all the way around. Very nice. Mm. Okay, so that'll be a lovely box and that locates the lid. It's not high enough, that five millimeters is adequate for when you, um, when you want to put hinges in there. It's not going to interfere with the hinges when we, when we put the hinges on, okay? So that's where we'll finish today, folks. Um, I hope you got something out of it. Um, don't forget Dave's, um, I think today what he's doing is fitting hinges. Um, he's also going to make a disc sander sled. Um, oh, and he's got a competition for a set of um, eye muffs. So if you want to jump on and have a little play with that. Um, also, I think he's, somebody has shown him some pictures of uh, some furniture made from a tree, which I think he's uh, quite chuffed about. So he'll show you that as well. Okay, so... If you like what you saw today, folks, and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, and um, we'll uh, catch you all next week, and um, have a good week, folks, and I'll get back to you with the rest of this box. Toodaloo. Bye.